we all know the famous saying, workers of the world embrace monarchy, or not. It won't surprise you to know that communist revolutionaries and monarchies don't exactly get along, and whenever a communist revolution occurs in a kingdom or an empire, the ruler is often swiftly removed one way or another. Yet, in 1979, Granada, which is here, had its own communist revolution which turned it into a one-party Marxist state with one notable difference. It kept Queen Elizabeth II as its head of state, thus making Granada a communist monarchy. Which, you know, why? Why did communist Granada keep its monarchy intact? So, as of the 1960s, the British Empire was well on its way to no longer existing. Granada was slowly given more and more autonomy until it gained its independence in 1974. And its new government kept the existing monarchy in place because it made the transition to independent government much smoother. It also helped to maintain good relations with Britain, which was a major trade partner. In 1976, Granada's incumbent Prime Minister Eric Gehry won re-election. Like other elections, he did this by getting the most votes. However, unlike other elections, he did not do this by having better policies, but by having his secret police assault anyone who wasn't going to vote for him. The opposition, the Marxist New Jewel movement, refused to accept the results because obviously, and so started to plan to get rid of Gehry. Three years later, whilst Gary was away, the NJM launched a coup and overthrew the government, and it placed its leader, Maurice Bishop, in charge. His government then arrested the Queen's representative there, the Governor-General Paul Schoon, who was soon afterwards released and the Communists kept him in his position. So why? Well, the reason was that keeping the monarchy suited the government's short-term needs. The Governor-General was required to stay politically neutral, and Schoon was willing to stay on despite his own opposition to the new government. This was useful for Bishop since keeping the Governor-General gave the government much more international legitimacy. Although, that's not how the British monarchy or government saw it. Speaking of which, the second reason that Communist Granada kept the crown was to improve relations with the United Kingdom as well as keeping its place in the Commonwealth. The UK government, led by Margaret Thatcher, was especially unhappy with the Communist coup, and thus they sanctioned the country. But Bishop kept the Governor-General because as he saw it, British governments changed fairly often whereas his would stay there forever meaning that irrespective of how long it took, relations would be normalised eventually. But beyond this, having a governor-general gave the Grenadian government a direct link to the ruler of these countries, without having to go through their governments who didn't like them. This lessened Grenada's international isolation, but also allowed for some mild top-down pressure to be applied to the rest of the Commonwealth. Now, whilst none of this happened, the British monarchy was also happy to maintain a governor-general in Grenada for similar reasons. When a colony abolishes the monarchy, it doesn't often come back, and as far as the British were concerned, the communist government would eventually fall. And when it did, the monarchy would be the sole legitimate power in the country, allowing for it to continue. So basically, both sides were expecting to outlive the other whilst using the governor-general to legitimise their presence there. It wouldn't be long until these plans were tested, since in 1983, Bishop's government fractured. He was seen as not communist enough and too dictatorial. As such, he was captured, executed, and his deputy prime minister took over, only for himself to be ousted five days later and replaced with a military junta. To the United States, the coup there presented an opportunity. At this stage of the Cold War, communist and communist-aligned governments were on the rise across the Americas, and so toppling the Grenadian government would undermine that rise and also rob Cuba of any friendly neighbours. And thus, after the Governor-General appealed for help, the US, along with Jamaica and Barbados, invaded the country to overthrow the government. As a result, the Grenadian communist monarchy was toppled, leaving the rest of the world thereafter a little bit puzzled by the entire thing. I hope you enjoyed this episode and thank you for watching with a special thanks to my patrons James Bizanet, Kelly Moneymaker, Corsho Wolf, Jerry Lambden, Jordan Longley, Adam Stalter, YN Hockey, Captain Sidog, Rod D. Martin, Marvin Cassow, Spencer Lightfoot, Gustav Swan, Camoon Yoon, Boogily Woogily, Matthew Shipley, Marcus Arsner, The McWhopper, Aaron The White, Max and Flaudio, Maggie Paskowski, Corey Turner, Alex Schwinn, Anthony Beckett, Spinning Three Plates, Copper Tone, Words About Books Podcast, Winston Kaywood, Charles I, Ben Ivinson, and Scottish Trekkie.